There's seemingly too much to study when you want to progress at the game of chess. There's openings, middle game strategy, there's end games, there's also tactics. So there's a lot of things that you want to jumble up in your head. You want to prioritize the what's more important to focus on. Make sure that you don't just lose out on progressing. You will focus on what you want to improve. Today, we're going to be talking about roadmap to improve your openings, the middle game strategy, end games, and tactical themes. So let's get started. With the openings, you want to make sure that at the start, you choose one opening and stick with it. Don't do crazy things like go like five openings for each side. Don't play too many openings at the start because you're going to be divided your attention and knowledge about the opening in general. You're going to be losing a lot of games quick and you don't know what happened. I advise you to start off with getting really good at one opening for each response for white and black. So if you have an opening that you're not really enjoying to play, that's fine. Experiment with openings and see if it's right for you. If it's not, just change it, drop the opening, and stop playing it. If you have an opening that you have bad performance with and you don't have anything to say for it, just change it up. Experiment with something else. So you don't have to play the opening, so you can change it for another one that is actually better for your style and you maybe have better results with it. For myself, I want to enjoy an opening that I like to play the positions I get to from it. Doesn't matter necessarily be that the book or recommendations from GM saying, oh, we have guaranteed a little bit of tiny, very tiny advantage if I play the exact moves as according to the theory. But I'd rather play, forget the theory, I want to play a position that is right for me. I like the positions. I know how to play the middle game after that in a right, easy way so that if something crazy happens, I still have a plan of attack in the game. So now let's talk about middle game strategy. First off, it is important to know how to come up with a plan based on the opening that you chose. So every opening they're having their natural development squares and having a plan of attack if you want to develop your pieces the idea squares. So it's important to have the middle game to have every piece do what they like best. Knights love outposts, Bishops love open lines, Rooks love open fouls, and doubling on them. And you can bind these all together and it'll be having a harmonious advantage for you. So a lot of those players will ask, what do I do if I don't know what to do? So the answer to this is simple. So if you don't know what to do, you wanna just approve your worst piece on the board. And over time, you do that a lot, you're gonna have a plan come out of nowhere. So if you have two bad pieces like, oh, middle legal, what should what do I do? So then how do you decide between two bad looking pieces? Doesn't matter, just prove one of them and prove the next one, next move. Let's talk about end games. To some people, they are daunting, very intimidating, also boring. The one is just play in the middle game, beat them and just don't worry about the end games at all. Or else it's basically, you don't know how to study the end games to get better at them. So it's basically a waste of time and retrospective in the beginner's mind because they want to focus on the early game, just getting a good game. But I can tell you that playing chess in the way that you're going to avoid all end game possibilities is a bad way to play the game. End game is a very big aspect of chess that determines, that, that separates good players from great players. End game skills are vital to be able to finish up the game in the desired fashion and result. So you want to learn things like pawn on games, opposition, distant opposition, and shouldering, things like that. So you want to be good at rooking games because 50% of all end games you're going to play in your life are rooking games. Learn basic essential techniques you can't skip out of, like the queen versus king end game. You want to make sure that you don't stalemate the king. So if you're really good at end games, your opponent has to beat you twice. So even if you have a bad position, you can go to end games and outplay them. Come back. You have a second life. Otherwise, if you don't play the end games at all, you don't have a second chance. And you would if you had end game skills. Now let's talk about tactics. There's a big misconception that you have to study tactics every single day, maybe hours at a time. You don't have to to be a decent player. I can tell you that. To be a decent player, I prefer that you have quality over quantity. So you want to study the tactics, the specific motifs that are more important to you than generally 
just doing tactics trainer was really, very boring, repetitive, and you don't see any progress. It's important to find these tactical motifs. So what I do is to go onto chess.com's Puzzle Rush Survival Mode. So every time I do this, I learn more tactical motifs I've never seen before and just want to adjust myself to improve my tactical ability. So overall, for all these concepts for the roadmap, so for any aspect of the game that you think that you're bad at, focus on improving that.